Hi everyone, uh, my name is Noha. I'm a PhD student at the University of Alberta. Um, and today I will be discussing some approaches about how we can evaluate open-ended dialogue systems. And in particular, I will talk about how can we evaluate um, uh, coherence and consistency in a dialogue system using entailment. Um, <clears throat> So over the past decades, dialogue systems have exploded in popularity and have become omnipresent in our daily life, assisting our daily routines and schedules. Um, and dialogue system basically can be grouped into two classes. The first class is what we call goal-oriented dialogue system, and the second class is what we call open-ended dialogue system, also known as chit-chat dialogue system. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining the different challenges um, <clears throat> of both uh, groups, uh, um, as it was covered uh, uh, very recently by uh, Bing. Um, so for goal-oriented dialogue system, um, these, is the, the, these models are designed for short conversations and to accomplish a specific task within a limited number of dialogue turns. For example, booking a flight or booking a table in a restaurant. Another uh, characteristics about a uh, goal-oriented dialogue system is that the search space is pretty narrow, meaning that uh, the number of possible correct answer is very limited, and this is expected as we are dealing with a very, um, uh, with a specific domain. Um, in the other hand, for open-ended dialogue system, um, they are designed for extended conversations and to chit chat with the humans in an open domain context that can be about any topic. Um, as opposed to goal-oriented uh, uh, systems, uh, the search space in open-ended dialogue system is very big, uh, and this is due to the diversity of possible correct answers. Um, there are a lot of challenges that we can face when building dialogue systems, and one of them is evaluation. Typically, for goal-oriented dialogue systems, evaluation is done via human-generated judgment like task completion test or user satisfaction score. However, um, the task of uh, evaluating open-ended dialogue system is not well-defined as there is no explicit um, goal for chit-chat um, uh, dialogue system. Um, and you can see typically the, the main goal of open-ended dialogue system is to um, entertain the user and to engage in the conversation. So it's really unclear how to define a metric that can account comprehensively for the overall quality of the dialogue. Um, so evaluation is super, super hard, um, and especially for open-ended dialogue system. Um, there are a lot of work that have been implemented for this purpose. Examples include word overlap metrics such as Blue, Meteor, and Druge. However, these metrics have been shown to correlate poorly with, with a human judgment, um, resulting in significant bias and uh, across um, uh, different models and data sets. Other approaches uh, that I can mention here is uh, statistical approaches, for example, perplexity. However, perplexity captures solely how likely the responses are under a generation probability distribution and does not measure um, uh, the quality, the overall quality of the dialogue, for example, the degree of diversity or engagingness. Um, also, we notice that in the research community, people often resort to human um, uh, evaluation of the overall, to assess the overall quality of the dialogue. However, such approach can be very expensive, uh, time consuming, and not scalable. And also, we know that humans tend to evaluate a small number of dialogues, meaning that uh, minor differences in evaluation setup can lead to dissimilar results. <clears throat> Um, other work have been uh, proposed as well very recently, and uh, I can classify these under uh, what we call learned evaluation methods. So uh, the ADAM model was proposed two years ago in ACL, and basically ADAM learns, um, trains uh, a recurrent neural network model in order to predict the scores for the overall quality of the, mo of the, the, for, of the responses. Um, and Adam, uh, wh what it does, it really uh, learns a human scores based on a, uh, it, it learns a human scores from human annotation, uh, and it's very problematic because it's exploit um, the um, uh, generated response, the ground truth response, and also the conversation history in order to generate this score. Um, it's very problematic because um, the model tends to assign a very high scores to responses that tend to be semantically very close to the ground truth response and assigns a very low score to responses that are very distant from the reference response, even though that response is very appropriate. Um, the re-evaluating Adam paper uh, was um, introduced last year in AAAI and there 
uh, present a deeper analysis of the Ada model and discuss different flaws of the, of the approach. Um, and also they show that uh, the Ada model is very susceptible to adversarial attacks where it fails to provide appropriate scores for multiple responses. So ideally what we want uh, in the research community, I think it's also in the production community, that we would like to have a well-designed automated metric that can provide an accurate evaluation of the system without any human intervention. Okay, um, now that I have discussed some of the challenges that we can face when building uh, open-ended dialog systems, here I'm gonna define, um, I'm gonna talk a bit how we can define and characterize um, uh, uh, successful conversations. Um, so social psychology literature describes how people achieve effective uh, conversational communication in common social situation, and in particular, Paul Grice in 1975 uh, proposed a conversational logic can be modeled, that conversational logic can be modeled as a set of maxims known as Grice maxims. Um, and these maxims correspond to the maxim of quantity, the maxim of quality, the maxim of relevance, and the maxim of manner. So let's, uh, see more details about each of these maxims. So the first maxim, um, the maximum of quantity means that um, you should be informative uh, in your, uh, in, your uh, in the conversation and no more. So meaning that you don't have to say things that you believe to be false and you don't have to talk about things that you lack adequate, adequate evidence uh, for. Um, and we noticed that in maximum of quantity, current um, di neural dialogue systems tend to violate these maxims, and as the responses tend to be overly generic and short, um, and therefore um, they tend to be less informative than desired. For the second maxim is the maximum of quality, and this maxim means that you have to be truthful in the conversation, um, and you don't have to um, say things that are false and not supported by uh, evidence. The third uh, maxim is the maxim of relevance, and basically this maxim means that you have to be relevant. You have to say stuff that are relevant to the conversation history, and to say things that are pertinent to what you have said before. Um, for the fourth maxim is the maxim of manner, and basically this maxim means that you should be uh, uh, orderly in the conversation, you should be clear and brief. Here clear means that you should provide, uh, make your uh, responses very specific, you, don't, you have to avoid generic and short responses, and also you have to avoid ambiguity and obscurity of expression. Um, so here to see dialogue quality from another angle, um, a very recent work from the uh, Facebook uh, research group, uh, they tried to control the dialogue response generation based on some um, um, low quality, at, uh, low um, uh, attributes, um, and these attributes correspond to repetition, specificity, response relatedness, and question ans asking. So by repetitions, they try to avoid rep repetitive uh, phrases within the utterance for specific they try to be more specific, to make the responses more specific in order to avoid having these um, overly uh, generic uh, phrases. Um, also, they try to make the responses related to the conversation history um, by making them more topical. And also, they try to balance between asking questions and answering them, when to ask questions, when to not ask questions. Um, so here they try to manipulate these four low um, uh, level attributes and then they measure uh, their overall effects on the uh, dialogue quality. Uh, their motivation here is that a good conversation requires balance between uh, simplicity and specificity, uh, between uh, staying on topic and switching between topic and between asking questions and answering them. Um, so I find these uh, lower level attributes to be very aligned with Grice maxims. For example, the repetition and specificity can be under, classified under the maxim of manner, as we have discussed earlier. Uh, the response relatedness can also be related to the maxim of relevance, where uh, Paul Grice was arguing that our responses basically should be very relevant to what we have said before. And um, uh, question asking here, I can uh, classify it under uh, the property of engagingness because in open-ended dialogue system, we want the dialogue system, we want the conversation to be engaging, to keep going, and to be interactive. So by asking question, we can make our conversation more interesting. Um, uh, more interesting. So yeah. 
so here we have discussed a lot of properties that can make our conversation successful. Um, one of the challenges uh, that is key for a successful conversation and that is understudied by the research community is consistency in dialogue. And uh, what uh, I mean here by consistency is that the responses must be self-consistent, meaning that they should not contradict one's previous utterances, um, they should be aligned with the conversation history, and also they should be tied to external laws or common sense. So we can see here that the, uh, the property of consistency here aligned with the maximum of quality as we need to be um, self-consistent in our conversation. Uh, to explain more what is consistency here, I, pro I, I provide a very short uh, conversation between a bot and between uh, a human, and this was generated by one of the models. Um, so basically here, the bot starts the conversation by saying, I like Captain America and Star Wars, and the human responds by, um, what superpowers did you wake with? And the bot replies, I do not like superpowers. As you can see here, this is something that we don't want at all in a conversation. Basically, the bot here is contradicting itself. So what we did in a recent work um, that we published in NACL, we framed the problem of dialogue consisten consistency as a natural language inference problem. And natural language inference problem, we focus on, uh, focuses on recognizing whether a hypothesis is inferred from a premise. So in a dialogue uh, context, we uh, frame the conversation history, we consider the conversation history as our premise and the uh, generated response as our hypothesis. So the goal here basically is to learn a function that given the conversation history and given the generated response, we wanna learn a function that will predict whether um, uh, the generated response is entailing, uh, contradicting, or uh, being neutral with the conversation history. So we can see here that if, uh, if the bot responds to the question, what superpowers did you awake with, with the label in term, uh, with, the, with the sentence moving object with my mind, we can consider this sentence as very appropriate and we can label to, uh, with, the, with, the, with the class entailment. If the bot generated something like, I don't know, we consider this as a very generic response, and this does not align with the Grice maxims, as in Grice maxims, we should be very clear and specific in our response. And here, the bot was claiming at the beginning, I like Captain America, by answering, I don't know, we consider that as a neutral. If the bot generated something like, I do not like superpowers, we consider this as a contradiction, as the bot uh, here clearly contradict itself. Um, okay, so how do we um, address this problem? Basically, we had, um, uh, we uh, fine-tuned the uh, pre-trained large bird model on this consistency, consistency task. So on top of bird, we had a classification model that tries to predict uh, one of these uh, three labels, contradiction, entailment, and neutral. And as an input, we have our uh, dialogue history plus the generated response. So here, uh, the, the model is expected to uh, classify this conversation as contradiction. So uh, for our consistency corpus, um, uh, in order to train our BERT model, we actually built a synthesized inference corpus based on the persona chat, uh, conversational data. And basically, the persona chat is a crowdsourced uh, data set uh, that where each uh, each, uh, like, where people converse uh, with each other based on a set of randomly assigned personas. Um, and basically, we consider that all the conversation within this data set uh, are very appropriate, so we label them with a class entailment. Um, to, in order to form some uh, utterances uh, that are generic, we had a set of manually collected uh, generic responses like, I don't know, I'm not sure what you're talking about, and we formed these uh, um, conversations. And in order to have some contradictory examples, we actually used some of the uh, examples from the MNLI datasets. The MNLI dataset also, it's a crowdsourced dataset of over 400K that was annotated with textual entailment. Um, and then we uh, fine-tuned our BERT model on this uh, data set. Um, so our data set was 100% uh, automatic. We didn't use any human annotators in order to provide us with the labels. Um, however, there is a recent work as well by the Facebook uh, research group where they provide a dialogue natural language inference data set. And basically this, I'm sorry, and basically this data set was annotated by humans using uh, Amazon Mechanical Turks. Um, 
uh, yeah, and uh, they actually, they have a very similar uh, work, uh, results to our work. For, for the experiments, in order to uh, measure how uh, the performance of our consistency model, uh, we train some neural dialogue system on uh, the conversational data set derived from Reddit. So we wanted to test the quality of some uh, responses generated by some state-of-the-art systems like uh, sequence to sequence, vanilla sec to sec, sec to sec plus attention, and some hierarchical sequence to sequence models. Um, and then basically, uh, we our uh, BERT model that was found tuned on the consistency task, uh, consistency task uh, achieved an accuracy of 0 0.63, uh, which is a reasonable performance um, as a first attempt for detecting inconsistency in dialogue systems. All right, um, I think I'm running out of time. Um, so here, the takeaway messages is that Evaluating dialogue system is very, very far from being solved, and researchers are still on the quest for a strong and a reliable metric that highly confirms with a human judgment. Um, can see, uh, consistency as well is a, very, is a key in evaluating dialogue systems, and that we tried here, it's the first step we consider towards achieving this goal. Um, and entailment techniques, according to uh, some of the results that we have, lay the foundation of future works to evaluate better the consistency in dialogues. Thank you very much.